Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And the watch on my wrist today is a front runner for the title of Greatest Patek Philippe of the 2010s. The decade's not over yet and there's some impressive competition in that category, but by any measure, the Patek Philippe 5370P 001 is an all-timer, not just at Patek, industry-wide. This watch dropped jaws when it debuted in 2015, a model made only by request and on approval from the Stearns themselves. Perhaps a few dozen are made every year. Think 12 to 24, not 48. The timepiece, incredibly gorgeous, sculpted, chiseled, is like something Michelangelo would have created had he lived a few hundred years later. You will note that the 41mm case is full-sized. By Patek standards, this is a large watch. It's not excessively thick. It's 13.9 with a sloped case flank, so critically for a Patek Philippe dress watch, it can still be worn with a suit. You will note that lug to lug, it likes to stretch its wings. 49.8 millimeters means it's broad and it has a wonderful sculpture flow to the lines of the lugs. Sometimes when they're cropped short to make a big watch fit small, they don't look quite right. Patek Philippe took no such measures. They let these lugs flow. And flow they do. Between them, the stance is 22 millimeters, so the watch has a modern appearance on the wrist. The distinction between a vintage watch and a modern watch, oftentimes more than case size, being the lug spacing. And you will note this being a platinum Patek Philippe, a top Vesselton diamond between the lugs at 6 o'clock. Now about that strap. It's about as good as you could have hoped for. Minimalist, slim, gloss, large rectangular scale alligator leather, monotone stitch, folded edge, compact in profile, supple on the underside where calfskin is employed, and the watch, of course, features a matching clasp, all of high polish in platinum 950, with a filigree style Calatrava cross on the top. This heavy clasp helps to counterweight this heavy watch. If you like to wear yours loose, it's almost like the keel of a sailboat, preventing it from turning over or capsizing. The case itself is far more complex than you would ever discern from the soldier shots, the head-on shots that you see on the internet. It is evacuated, it is channeled, it is nuanced. You have both the channel that runs the full span of the case band and the lugs, as well as evocative large cabochon in platinum that are designed to evoke screw-fixed lugs of yesteryear. They have a handsome volume and a polished contrast with the satin interiors of these channels that I find delectable. The lips of the case band also of polish for contrast, and the bezel a concave in a fashion that is characteristic of Patek Philippe to visually pair the mass of the watch. You will note the case relatively simple and polished between the lugs, and the dial absolutely sensational, but also significantly imperfect, because you'll note this is a smartwatch, email, I kid, ML in French being enamel, and this is a rarity because you can buy a Patek Philippe grand complication and not get ML. You can get a 5016 with a minute repeater, a tourbillon, and a perpetual calendar, and still get black lacquer. With Patek Philippe, black enamel is reserved for very special occasions, and this watch qualifies. You'll note, as you loop it, that there are small undulations and ridges, a few rusticated textures that are endemic to black enamel that prove the hand of the artisan was present and make it beautiful for its imperfection. The contrast of white print on the gloss black base is superb, and you'll note a tachymeter scale outboard and base 1000. It's used for gauging the speed of things moving very quickly. This is a sporting complication, and that complication is a split seconds chronograph, which Patek Philippe says is more similar to a minute repeater and tourbillon in the difficulty of achieving and tuning rather than a perpetual calendar. This is part of the big three as Patek ordains it. You will note the hands at center, leaf or foy style, recapitulated in the form of solid white gold hands on the sub-registers. This is a loomed watch, and you'll note the instantaneous jump of the minute track, but this is a loomed watch and there will be a loom shot. Breguet numerals. Did I say black enamel was special at Patek Philippe? Combine that with white gold applique Breguet numerals, and you have something so hot it's hard to handle. It is burning up my light box. 
You'll also note that attention to detail from a functional standpoint is superb as there is a recessed kerf at the top of the coaxial crown and retropump pusher, so you can easily dig your nail in from the top or from the bottom if you wish. This is a watch designed to be worn, used, and enjoyed. Turn it all over, and by the way, how much do you love those mini railroad tracks in the sub-registers? But turn it all over and despair that this is not part of your daily routine. I know I do. This is something I could gaze upon for hours. Patek Philippe, manufacture caliber, naturally. CHR 29535 PS, manual wind, 65 hour power reserve, 8 beats per second, 28,800 vibrations per hour. It does feature hacking seconds. That feature characteristic only of the most modern and sophisticated of Patek calibers and not found on its traditional movements. Two column wheels, one black capped for the primary chronograph functions and one that's mixed in with the split seconds apparatus closer to the crown. We'll see both of them in action you can see the pincer device that both stops and releases the split second mechanism at center and you'll note a overcoil hairspring so that the watch can beat superbly in any position any orientation with respect to gravity tuned better than a chronometer in six positions rather than the characteristic chronometer five and regulated to no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day in excess of chronometer specifications this is a chronometer plus per Patek Philippe, and they top it off with their free-sprung Gyromax style balance architecture that they've been perfecting since the early 1950s. It allows the watch to take that precise regulation and hold it over time. You will note that the chronograph mechanism, traditional, very old school, watch it interact with its primary column wheel. You can see the interaction of the levers and horns with the crenellated tower underneath that black cap. You will note the fully jeweled chronograph clutch. No bushings here, only the best for a Patek Philippe lateral clutch chronograph. And when it resets, the recentering hammer is falling at center. You also note quite a bit of apparatus here as there's a second column wheel with a series of incredibly intricate and fragile springs that I imagine only a handful of masters, even at Patek Philippe, are able to manipulate. You'll also note that there's a rack and snail system which works almost inversely to the method that you'll see on a minute repeater, whereby it instantaneously jumps by a pawl and wheel arrangement. So every time this seconds hand passes the index at 60, it jumps the minute instantaneously. You will note it is like a jungle wrought from metal. You can see the black polish. Everything that turns black when I turn the watch flush to the camera from the screw heads to the cap of the column wheel, black polished, the highest optical standard, mirrored on glage, not just on the edge of every bridge, but also on the edge of every lever, straight grained finish and absolutely immaculate, Cote de Genève, tight engine turned perlage on the base plate, and every individual screw hand finished, its slot chamfered, its circumference radiused, its top black polished, and the pilot, the stalk, on the bottom of the threaded portion of the screw. Were you to extract the screw, you would find that the pilot at the bottom of the stalk is mirrored. This is as good as it gets, folks. I'm in love. 34 jewels, hand adjusted, hand finished, hand made, and should you purchase this watch, I will fly out to any location in the continental U.S. and hand deliver it to you. See it and make it yours on the watch box. And I'm back with the Patek Philippe 5370P. As you can see, it is loomed. You can read it at night. 30 meters water resistant, so it's not really a sports watch all up. But if you take this thing in the water, I'm not sure we can be friends. See it by day, high and dry, on the watch box.